Welcome back everyone, I'm your Gibbs, and guess what we're doing today? We're going to be getting into the second Nancy Drew. This is Stay Tuned for Danger. Once again, I have not played this one. I had not played number one, which we completed recently. And this is my first time playing number two. I'm super hyped. And uh, we are playing this with the engine that I used for the first game. And we're going to use this for the first six. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Stay tuned for danger. Dear Bess, you'll never guess who I'm visiting in New York. Maddie Jensen, your favorite soap star from Light of Our Love. Maddie is renting Aunt Eloise's apartment in New York. And after hearing about my last case, Secrets Can Kill, Maddie called to invite me up here. According to Maddie, Rick Arlen is getting death threats, but he won't go to the police. So she wants me to do some investigation work. Can you imagine anyone not liking Rick Arlen, daytime's cutest hunk? I have a sneaking suspicion, though, that there's more to this case than meets the eye. Call you later, Nancy. All right, it looks like we're going to Maddie, Maddie Jensen. So, we are in New York City, and uh, let's see here, we got Central Park. I don't know how accurate this is, but um, everything looks super parallel and perpendicular. 7226 and 7223. What happens when we go back? Oh, I see, we go back to the map. Cool, cool, cool. This actually looks quite lovely. Come on in, Nancy. The door's open. The door's open. Let's do this. Lovely little apartment here with all sorts of pictures on the wall. Oh, that must be uh, Maddie there. Miss Manhattan. Oh, she's in a period piece here. Looking good. I see that they've kept the, uh, the game engine here. This is lovely. Let's go... Uh, looks like there's a staircase here too, but... Um, I think we need to figure out where Maddie is sitting. Some lovely hats. As I learned in the last game, we gotta dig through all the drawers and find all the goodies. Nancy, while you were out, Ned called. He asked me to tell you to call him the first chance you get. By the way, he sounds cute. He's a cutie, all right. Ned. Wait, what's Ned's number? Do the numbers change, like game to game, or is it always the same number? Oh, it just dawned on me. Okay, let's just pick it up and see. Ah, okay, there we go. One. Okay, that number looks pretty familiar. The area code for sure. Five, 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 four, three, five, seven. Pick up, Ned, pick up. Hello? Guess who? Nancy! First you leave me to visit your aunt in Florida, and now you're in New York. By the time you get back to River Heights, I'll be an old man. Uh, yeah, well, you know, a woman's got to work, bro. That's okay, I still love you. That's okay, I'll still love you. Even if I'm bald and wearing dentures? Of course. Of course, Ned. Even if you're toothless and hairless. You're so <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Strange, but sweet. So, Hannah told me about the investigation you're working on. Sounds neat, but kind of dangerous. Anything I can help you out with? Um, yeah. Is there anything to help us out with? I don't know. Well, I'm getting along? Well, I'm getting along so far. Okay, I'll let you get back to your sleuthing. Be careful. I love you. Well, we might as well give uh, the ladies a call, since we're here. Hi, 
you've reached Bess Marvin. I can't come to the phone right now, but please leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. No, Bess, no. Okay, let's call George. George is my dependable one. Come on, pick up. This is George Fain. After the tone, please leave your name, phone number, and a brief message. Thanks. Okay, fine. I, you know what? I really hope that we get to talk to them more often. The first game was rather disappointing. <laughs> I think I got their voicemail like the entire game. And, uh, you know, that kind of was a little rough. Oh, who's this lovely lady? Welcome to New York, Nancy. I'm really glad you could come out here on such short notice. I'm happy you could have me. It's always nice to come back to the Big Apple. It's always nice to come back to the Big Apple. And now I get to stay with a famous soap opera star. It must be exciting work. Believe me, it's not all that exciting. With 5 a.m. shoots, a million lines to learn, people all uptight and yelling. And now Rick's getting these death threats. Yeah, what's with the death threats? can't be all bad. But it can't be all that bad being a star, can it? Yes, it can be all that bad. If Rick leaves the show, Light of Our Love could be in a lot of trouble. Everyone's worried that the show could get cancelled. Tell me about the death threats. Well, tell me about the death threats. Well, for the past month, my co-star Rick Arlen has been getting these awful death threats. At first, we all shrugged it off. You get the occasional odd letter in this business. But then they started to get weird. How weird? Like, what's the definition of weird? Weird? They're totally bizarre. Not only did he get letters, but somebody sent him a box of poison chocolates, a broken watch, and then there's that whole thing with the teleprompter. The teleprompter? Wow, we got a lot going on here. Poison chocolates. Bro oh, I mean, we really need to know about everything. Let's start with the poison chocolates. Someone sent him poison chocolates? Rick's a major chocoholic. His fans and friends are always sending him boxes of candy. But these chocolates were so nasty, Rick spit them out. <laughs> I've never seen Rick say no to chocolate before. Did he go to the police? Did Rick go to the police? No, and that's the problem. No one is taking any of this seriously. Especially Rick. He thinks nothing will ever hurt him. Well, he is a, a man, so you know. <laughs> Tell me about the letters. Well, the first ones had the letters cut out of magazines, you know, like on a ransom note. They were all signed by someone named B.T. Kaiser. Somehow the news leaked out and the press totally jumped on them. Then they started getting ugly and twisted. Nancy, I'm running late. I need to get to the studio. Hey, no, why don't you come over and visit? I'll leave a visitor's pass for you at the security desk. I... Oh, before I forget, here's a copy of the house keys. I'm ha... always losing my keys, so I've got plenty of copies. I'll write the studio's address on your map. Just catch a taxi cab outside and show them the map. Maddie, They'll Ma know how to get there. Oh my god, Maddie, what the hell? I had like 10 questions. And she's like, yip, 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 yip. and I'm like, ah, uh, uh, uh. oh, Maddie. I mean, if Rick's a chocoholic, Maddie's a talkaholic. Damn, she can talk. So I've got keys, uh, cool, cool. Put them in there, that's nice. So I'm also just snoop around while we, Maddie has left us here in a real hurry. Some lovely pictures here. Oh, yay, looks like we're gonna have to deal with the VCR again. I need something to make this work. Gee, I wonder what it could be. I like how it's NDTV, Nancy Drew TV. That's nice. Ooh, 1999 award soap stars, Maddie Jensen. Oh, she's the best actress. Love it, love it. 
She is definitely something. Oh, look at her awards up there. I don't know what exactly they are. Emmys, maybe? <laughs> Who? Oh, wow. Okay. That's a little uncanny valley there. <laughs> Love it. Let's, uh, I don't know if I can... Okay, no, let's just go into the pictures. Let's back up. Oh, wow. Uh, so this is definitely giving me some deja vu of, like, the controls just yank you, and it's like... I didn't want to go that far, you know? This takes a little getting used to. Hey, we got a script! Rory, I was hoping to find you here. I've been making myself right at home, love. Serena, I see you found my personal diary. Well, yeah, you left it out on the table for all the world to see. What was I supposed to do? Well, you could have shown a little respect for my privacy and left alone. You know me better than that. Your business is my business, babe. Property of Worldwide Broadcasting. Page five. Page five. So we've got a nice desk over here. So let's go check it out. She's got a lot of stuff here. Ah, let's just open up a random little letter here. 23rd annual daytime soap opera gala. Manhattan Crest Country Club. So we just put that back. Maddie, I'm writing this letter because you never call me. You can't be that busy not to phone your poor mother, can you? I saw your photo on Soap Opera Journal at the store. You'd think that my own daughter would at least send me a copy. I was devastated to see that your picture is so much smaller than Rick's. What makes him more important than you? Darling, you must remember that you are the real star. Oh, mothers. Mothers are fun. And it's about time we show the world that you are number one. I will not allow you to ever play second fiddle to that man. Without your talent, he'd be nothing. Remember that. And remember the person who paid for all your acting lessons for those years. Oh, dear mother. All right. Well, mothers are being motherly here, I guess. I'm sure that's fine. Not gonna cause too much of an issue, is it? November 13? Hmm. Lovely looking. F I like how. Like, check this out. <laughs> oh my god, this is too much fun. Like, just check out how it's real people except for Maddie. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> What is going on here? I, I, I'm a little bit floored here. It's too much fun. So, okay, I guess we don't really get much to do on that at the moment. Now, is there anything else on this desk? Aha. It's locked. I have keys. Will that help it's me? It's locked. No. Who's this guy? <laughs> it's locked. Hey, actually, I don't remember her saying that in this, the first game. Is that the first official get it's locked? There's definitely some weirdness going on here.
And it's definitely weird how they're using real photos mixed with like hand drawn ones. It's kind of weird. It's definitely uh, very uncanny valley ish. Okay, so that's good, I suppose. How do I get out of here? Close the book. Yes, a VCR remote. Manhattan Television Guide. Will Celeste ever forgive Alex? What to expect from TV's hottest couple? A long road to fame. Ah, uh, most people have deemed this impression that it's easy to become a famous actor. All you need is a nice smile and a bus ticket bound for New York or LA. Hmm. A long road to fame, she says. So, okay, so we've got that. That's good. Close that up here real nice. And we'll back up. Hmm. So we've checked this out and we've checked that out. So we have over here. Chatter Magazine. How to get what you want fast. Inside the mind of a celebrity stalker. What's new in daytime television? What the hell is going on here? What the? What in the hell is this? OMG. This is bizarre. What the hell are... I don't even know. hell is this why does he look that way the last days of rory a danner good heavens the last days of rory danner rumors are rampant that rick arland lol's rory a danner is breaking his contract with worldwide broadcasting and setting his sights on a career in film Interesting. So, I guess Rick's Rick's the actor and Rory is the character. Um, of course they're both ours because you know that's just gonna make Gibbs' life a little bit more challenging. Yeah, there's definitely something going on here. Some gossip in the gossip mag. Okay, how do I? Close this magazine. It takes me to the cover. What else you got in here that I can snoop around and take a look at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this photo is just priceless. I feel like I don't even want to call it Photoshop them. It's like. I don't even know what it is. They've definitely taken like a real photo and stuck their heads on it. That is something special. And I feel like it's okay in the grand scheme of things. This is awesome. Because at the time, right? That this game was made. <laughs> I can't help myself. These are all so good! Look, like... Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so, <laughs> focusing in here. What was the point of this? Snoop, I guess, right? Coming upstairs. Turn night to day or day to night. Your choice is yours for darkness or light. Choose the path you decide. Oh, okay, so we can, like, change the time or something. That's kind of neat. So I'm not ready to change the time. I'm not sure, so... Hmm. So we didn't even get a chance to really talk to Maddie at all. Uh, all right, 
right, let's go back just one more time here. I want to make sure that we've exhausted this space. So we've seen all of that. And... Hmm. So there's more lockage to here, I guess. Oh, damn, what's this? Rick, there is so much that I want to tell you and confide in you, but I'm afraid of where this would lead. I am truly in love with you, but how can I be sure that you feel the same way? I think we both know the answer. But I think you refuse to admit it. You would refuse to admit that you are truly in love with me. And I think that makes you afraid. Afraid of the commitment this would mean. Why must you continue playing the part of the confirmed bachelor, constantly looking for another date? We both know you're not happy with this part, but you still play it. You still play the incurable romantic when all you really need, all you really want, is a lifetime of love. I am ready for this commitment. Oh my god. <laughs> this is uh, well written. I think I might actually use this. I mean, never mind. <clears throat> Close it up. Is there another one? Oh, there might be one over here. The rose is thought. What? The rose is thought of love divine. Oh, be what is this? This is crazy. Oh, be thy, be thou my. <laughs> wow. Oh, be thou my Valentine. What is that like old English or something? Oh, okay. We got another uh, love letter. Oh, this time from good old Rickaroonie here. Dearest Maddie, my love, my one and only mi amore, you are the sparkle in my eye, the song in my heart, the woman of my dreams. When I hear your soft voice fill the air, it sounds like a chorus of angels, a sound that I'm missing right now as I write this. My life is darkened and full of despair without you. I cannot bear the thought of separating from you for more than a second. How I miss the warmth of your smile, the way your light shines through your hair and your eyes. I could gaze into those twin pools of beauty forever. Nothing more would give me such pleasure. I will sadly count the hours until our next rendezvous. Until then, sign me. In love, Ricky. All right, so, ah, wow, love. Great, we are 10 minutes into this. No, we're not, we're 20 minutes into this. And I'm already feeling the love. Well, I feel like we're gonna have to uh, settle in for the rest of this and find out where this love story is gonna take us.